DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy to manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Wait, no, it's, there it is. Okay, good. Over there. Early there this time. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, welcome everybody. And uh, thank you for tuning in on this Monday evening. We've got a, a very interesting show for you this evening because John just decided to throw things at me. Now, uh, in all seriousness, it's definitely a topic I think that is very well suited, especially coming out of NAM. Uh, tonight, we are going to be talking about uh, the right rig for the gig. And uh, so a lot of different kind of directions that we'll be going with this. But of course, it's going to be a gear oriented show. And so if you've got some things that you would like to weigh in um, or your own personal opinions or tidbits or whatever else you might want to throw, of course, make sure you're putting them into the chat. John and I will be watching those. I I'm watching the YouTube one. If you're on some other device or watching some other place, I just don't like you as much. You can't say that because Big Daddy's out there on Facebook and we got to say hey to Big Daddy. He's with us. Oh. Well, if you're anybody other than Big Daddy watching in some other place. Yeah, pretty much. Big pretty Daddy, much. we love you. Yeah, if, if it's on anyone beyond that, what's wrong with you? But Big Daddy, we'll, we'll go okay. out to Facebook for that. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, Dan, at the latter part of our show, I'm going to give you, you know how Ben's still one of his favorite things when you ask him a question, you want to pin him down on something, he comes back with the word, it depends. It depends. Tonight, I'm going to give you the foolproof method for figuring out what you need for sound system for your guests. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Seriously. I have we're, not, we're not going to use the it depends? No, we're not. We're going to come out and we're going to give you, you'll like this, Dan, mathematical equations to figure it out. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be really awesome. And we'll do that a little bit later in the show. But yes, okay. I've been working on this. I have I have done some research on this. I have called in experts in many different fields, and we have come up with something that will function almost every time. Almost wow! Time. Yeah. So. Okay. For those of you who are interested in that, we'll be talking about that spot later. But um, first off, uh, I guess where I wanted to kind of start with this is, uh, you know, there's a variety of different, different, uh, you know, sound systems. We just have gotten a new uh, version of the Evolves, the original Evolve. Uh, there's more array speakers and they've got 15s and they've got 10s and they've got 12s and there's, you know, the regular speakers and such. I guess what I wanted to start with, though, Dan, is a discussion a little bit about is it the DJ who thinks they need more, or is it the guests who think we need more when it comes to sound systems? I, I think it's a little bit of both. Because occasionally what I'll run into is you, you get some guests who are kind of, I, I almost want to say like an old school mentality. Like, especially when I first started going in with my Evolves, like I had some people who are like, oh, they're, you know, they're sleek, they're night, mm -hmm. you know, different things. And then I have other ones who are just like, where's the rest of it you know like they're they're used to the the dj that brings in the box that's like five times the size of your head and and it's not that you know they need it it's for a room the size of a you know a bathroom closet but it's you know it they just have this mentality this picture um and then occasionally you'll get the you'll get the guests to you know turn it up and you know it's at full bore or whatever might be the case so i think there is a little bit of of both um, that goes into that sometimes a guest and of course DJs we just always want more gear so. I think the you kind of hit on on one of the areas in which I wanted to hit to talk about is guest perception when we went to the Bose when the Bose first came out with that cylindrical system that little L1 system which back then they called it the the, the Bose radiators you know they didn't call it uh, model one L1 whatever it is now uh, People would look at that, and that that whole you know, where's the rest of it, was a common thing 
that uh, people would be like, they, they, you know, they were expecting that. Were they expecting just the visual, or do you think that they actually perceived a less a less sound quality or a less sound capability from that system? I think it was just visually they were expecting something different, and so therefore it had to be it had to be different. Like I, I don't. I, that was my comment in the YouTube because my video is just sitting there spinning and it's not playing. So oh. I don't know what's up with you, that. But it's called refresh. Click the refresh. I did. So you, did you pay your internet bill this month? If I didn't, we wouldn't be able to be talking right now. I, You're a talented man, Dan. You could probably manage <laughs> one without the other. Maybe. Maybe so. Mitch, but. thank you for joining us. We got quite a few folks jumping in tonight. Howie and, and uh, David and Robin and uh, da -da, John is with us. So thank you guys for being with guys and gals for being with us tonight so the perception i think is one of the things that we sometimes will put too much precedent into when we have guests that come up there and you know turn it up well there's that one person in the crowd that might yell turn it up and we know that if we reach over to the board and say and we pretend we're pushing the knob up and i think you've referred to that doing that a few times mm -hmm. we pretend and they're like all right and then that's the end of it and the rest of the guests are still happy because you're not blowing them out of the water it's it's one of those things that I, I think that we have one or two people in it. And I truthfully, I haven't had someone come up and say, hey, turn it up in a long, long time. Um, not that I'm playing loud or anything. It's just that the coverage of the room has been you know good for what what the application was. Is it become one of these things that uh, that a person is giving them too much authority or too much uh, credibility? When they're like, oh, we need big, you know, and we, we even hear when he, we're talking about the, the array systems and people are like, oh, you need boxes. You need a 12 inch in the top, at least a 15 is better. And we need to have, you know, 47 inch subs down below that. And da, 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 da. Is it really necessary? And I think Brian Red does a nice job of discussing that. Yeah. I, I, I really find it hard to believe that we could ever say something's necessary. Um, you know, I, I think it, you know to to be more effective, to be more efficient, to be able to do what we're doing with a better uh, with with better ease. Um, but but a lot of a lot of the impressions I think come from an old school mentality. Um, I remember the first time I went to active speakers and I had twelves. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, oh, you, you got to have fifteen. So I'm like, why? You know, and, and, and at the time, it was what we were starting to find out, it was kind of as the, there was a change where the 12s were starting to hit, the 12 tops rather, were starting to hit like the 15s did. Yeah. You know, they, they, were, they were made better. They had, you know, different acoustics in them and all the stuff to make them so they didn't have to be 15s and still give us that, that sound that we're looking for. Um, so I think a lot of times it, it is. It's just that perception that it's got to be this way because that's what I've seen at every other event i've been to and it becomes that the expected norm as opposed to having the the gear that will do the job and possibly do the job in a better way than a traditional horn loaded cabinet mm -hmm. and i think that's that's probably one of my biggest uh, frustrations i have when djs are talking about oh we've got to have these you know the if you can you know use etx and at this at, for your weddings and they'll work fine yes they can work fine but there's a completely different mechanism when it comes to delivering the mids and highs on an ETX, which are designed to throw these and throw these at a, a, a greater distance. Whereas our Evolves have those little radiator uh, uh, pieces on the on the uh, tweeters, or I should say the, the uh, cones on the top, so that they can have that 170 degree dispersion, which for a wedding DJ is much more, uh, much more appropriate, I, I would say. Yeah, I would say most of I mean, and, and people talk about this as far as like the, you know, the venue size and all that's definitely going to work into it. And, and we'll see that with your equation later, I'm sure. But, you know, I think what we're also noticing in at least the wedding industry is and you're no longer having 250, 300 person weddings. We're lucky if we're having 125 to 150 people weddings. Mm -hmm. and, and so you're not needing to throw it from one end of the room you know, completely to the other side of this, you know, football field. It, it's instead it's your dance floor is in front of you. It's, it's more concentrated and you want that wide dispersion because also the, where they're putting you, um, 
you know, you're in the middle of the floor and your guests are this way. They're not, you're not here and you're shooting that way. So you definitely want something that's going to, that's going to give that nice sound. I, I still have a, uh, a flashback to my cousin-in-law's wedding where we were kind of, we were in one of the side pieces. I had no clue what the toasts were being said. Yeah. In fact, I looked over at one of her, um, my wife's other cousins who was getting married and they were considering the DJ. And I said, listen, they said, if you're going to use them, just tell them, you know, they need to turn their speakers. Like, it, you know, it was, the, it was the idea of just if they'd done this. So for during toast, turn it back. But we, different, you know, different needs for different reasons. And, I, and sometimes, of course, the speaker placement will help, um, which in my, my equation, it doesn't matter because I've got to figure it out so well. But of course, um, and, that, and that's another another area. I think that we we are under the assumption that look, if you guys got a chance to check out Bill Herman's video today, Bill Herman's video talking about a very difficult setup in a wedding uh, of a wedding area there. If you take a look at that room, it was a an oddly shaped kind of I, I guess I would kind of envision it as a triangle and it could have been um, a, a um, it would have been an acute triangle with a, a 90 degree I think there was about a 90 degree corner roughly in uh, in in uh, that situation um, that particular that particular venue though it was such an odd shaped that a traditional DJ speaker system let's go to the traditional horn loaded uh, with the subs would have just bounced off those windows all day long. And mm. it would have been very annoying and very problematic. Uh, if you guys get a chance, go check it out uh, today on Disc Jockey, the Disc Jockey News YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Disc Jockey News. Go down to Bill's talking about the wedding venue. Look at that venue. That particular um, spot would have been, the a traditional horn-loaded speaker would have not been the right rig for the gig because it would have had the exact same problems you were referring to where you wouldn't have been able to hear the toast because of the situation uh, of the of the layout of this space and such. It would have required more speakers in different locations, plus it would have required you to know enough about the speakers to uh, be able to adjust them to be able to handle all of that glass and, and uh, such that they had, because there was a lot of glass. What does that typically mean? Uh, let's go back to our, our array speakers. That means you're probably gonna turn that sub down about three to four clicks, three to four decibels from regular run. And you would find out that they would work much, much better. And we're going to be we're going to mention the evolves. Um, the reason we're talking evolves is just because Dan and I are very familiar with those speakers. But really, any of the newer uh, array speakers, whether it's from FBT or uh, LD systems, uh, um, RCF, the newer array systems are very, very similar in what they can do and what they can produce. So don't think that we're just uh, you know oh, they hate every one aisle, every other speaker. That's not true. We only hate horn loaded speakers. Oh, no, 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 no. Watch it. I think I've got one of those. Like, no, you can't see it. I can't see it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I've got a wall in there of my Electro Voice EKX and ETX and ELX 200s. Yeah. No, we, and there are times for those. And when we get into the formula a little bit later, we will be talking about said things because there are, when you are doing the right event, you need to have that kind of horsepower. The question, my next question in this, is there times as a wedding DJ, when that vocal is more important to the point where the the voice, whether it's the vocalist in the music or the microphone, that that need supersedes the quality of the specifically bass of uh, for the dance. Have you ever found yourself, it's like, okay, I really don't care about the bass, but I need to make sure these microphones or they can hear what's going on more than the other. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, First off, if you're talking, you know, weddings in general, you've got ceremony. Um, nobody, I don't want to say nobody. Very few people need to feel the bass as the bride is walking down the aisle. You know, it, it's just not where it's going to be important. Or when they're standing up front, you, you want to have some, you want to have some depth to it. I, I don't want to say like, you know, your your lower frequencies aren't important there, but you want the vocals to cut through. And when you're at a reception during a toast, absolutely, you want the vocals to cut through. You want your vocals to cut through when you're talking, when you're making announcements, when you're connecting with your guests. Um, in my own EQ of my microphone, my my highs are probably at like two o'clock, and my and my lows are at like nine or ten, just because you want to be able to cut through. Um, and, and I would say, even to a degree, when you get in, when you're getting into your dancing. 
with a wedding crowd, vocals become important because they want to have that familiarity of the song, not in all cases, but in a lot mm -hmm. of cases for the general audience to get up to dance to. I would agree. Yeah. And, and if you're bass heavy, sometimes it's a little harder for certain generations to pick out what the song is and come up, especially if you're using a redrum or something else. Um, they just might not pick up on it right away. And so when you have the vocals being a little bit stronger and a little bit easier to push through, it's a little bit, oh, yeah, I, I got that song. I got the melody right away. Let's go. Um, let's get let's get to the floor because that's I, you know, I loved it at Susie's wedding. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point is that especially as our guests, the older guests and, and really – you think about it when we're doing weddings for couples who are in their thirties now, that means that their parents are in their fifties. And if there's grandparents there, you know, even so-and-so they they're hearing needs in there and such for our dances is different than it was when they were all in their 19 and twenties type of thing. Mm -hmm. And at um, that baseline at a wedding, very seldom are they dancing to the bass line of a song. They're dancing and singing along compared to a club where it, this is this is actually kind of a, a, a kind of a running thing with a couple of a uh, couple of friends you know EDM music it's like okay so i have no idea what the song is i'm just listening to this bass line and this little this instrument i have no idea what i'm listening to and half the room it's like okay do you know what this song is no i have no idea but boy listen to this bass line it's just great and it's like okay so that works for an age group or a type of listener most of our weddings don't have that. So the vocals, uh, the, the clarity of the songs is much more important, uh, much more important than the other. You know, and, and you hit on something that I'm kind of putting two, two together here and I never really thought about, you know, with, uh, with the array systems where you're talking about the wide dispersion that you have, your, your subs doesn't have a direction. I get that. But when you have, when you're having these smaller sub units uh, on the, on it, the, they're not throwing the sub, it's not a long distance throw. It's, it's more of a short throw. Correct. Yeah. And so what I think is really kind of cool about the align arrays, whether this is, was a design feature or not, you're reaching out the, the outskirts with that, with that sound. And then when you get them on the floor, now they're, now their proximity to your sub is a lot closer and the feel, they're going to feel that sub a little bit. Again, they're not going to feel it like an 18, but they're going to feel it um, a little bit. So you almost get, like we're going to hook them out here where they can hear what's going on and we're going to let them feel it a little bit now that they're already here. Right. You know, kind of a, a best of both worlds, if you will. And I think that's something that Brian and uh, Brian Red and a lot of his videos has talked about is that he likes the 12 for his dance floor. And for a while, if you guys remember his micro system, he ran a few years back with two eight inch tops and he had a 12, I believe it was a 12 inch sub under the table. That did exactly what uh, Dan Dan is describing. We get they can hear it, they can talk over there, and they can talk back there. But then when they get to the dance floor, that's where they can get that little bit of a snap and that little bit of a thump. Interesting. Uh, tomorrow night's show with Ben Stowe is actually going to sp speaking specifically of bass. Uh, where Ben is going to be going into a little bit about miking a bass drum. Now, how, how, why does that matter? There's going to be something Ben uh, is going to be talking about with the bass drum uh, when he's doing that that was something I didn't didn't even realize was part of the, the process. How he's going to watch it, he's going to go, yep, I knew that. And I did, how did you not know that, John? <laughs> yeah, Ben, ben uh, will be covering that tomorrow night. Uh, this, is, this is something uh, that will be kind of interesting. So a little teaser for tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday with Ben Stell. We're going to be talking about microphone and pattern, pickup patterns and different things. So... Anyway, that was when you mentioned bass uh, and, and the sound and hearing it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jonathan, thank you for being with us here. And uh, da -da -da. let's see. Greg is with us and Sean is with us. Thank you for being with us. David, we got like, quite a few people here tonight. I think I think I just checked and there was like 75 that are on a different channel. So nice. Uh, by the way, I am giving up on the YouTube right at this point. Really? Because uh, now the video's there and the chat's not. <laughs> oh, well, you had the chat earlier because I saw you had made a couple of comments. Yeah, I had the chat. They didn't have the video. It was buffering. 
recognize the video. And now you, and now you don't, you, you don't. Not, well, maybe if you refresh again, now you'll get the video, the chat, or you refresh again and you get the ads, but nothing else. That'll be great. Maybe. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Ads. Yeah, yeah. Ads. Use yeah. a speaker for a drum mix. Ah, uh, Jimmy. Scott's with us. Adrian's with us. Thank you for being with tonight. Um, so, so let's, let's kind of jump to the ceremony side of things because mm -hmm. the, the ceremony side is something that a lot of, a lot of DJs talk, uh, talk about. And one specifically thing that has just been not sitting well with me. And I think, and I've mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned it on this show or, or, uh, one of the others is DJs are looking for that perfect ceremony system. And they're like, okay, that little Bose, the S1 Pro, which is a little battery powered. I don't know. It's an eight inch in there, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, little, nice little speaker. Don't get me wrong. I, it's probably the speaker that I use the most often, not the most, it most often, meaning that it will be up. I'll turn the Bluetooth on and I'll play bumper music as I'm ripping down. So people don't yell and scream. It gets blues. But people are saying, oh, there's your perfect ceremony sound system is this one little speaker. And and I look at things like a, a ceremony system or ceremony. I have not had good luck when I've been doing ceremony, especially if I go with a one speaker system, because a lot of my ceremonies are outside. And once you're outside, one little speaker just doesn't have the capability, I don't think, of carrying, of taking that voice around where you need to go. What's your experience been in that uh, area, Dan? Uh, I, I don't use it from the standpoint that a lot of times, depending upon power and, and whatnot with where I'm at, I'm not close enough for, for the Bose S1 to, to really be effective. I use one, but I use, I use a bigger, I use my EKX, um, because that I'm, my evolves are too busy inside. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've used, I take it back. I've used the S1 before and in a situation where. Uh, I, I needed, I needed to have a battery system. Like I needed to have that type of a pull to it. Um, so in those situations, absolutely that, like that was what took precedent and that's why I needed to have it. But I feel like, you know, exactly what you hit on something like that, you know, the SPL on and everything, you're going to want more than one. You're going to, yeah. you're going to want that double, double effect, um, whether you're sending it you know, whether you're sending it wirelessly, so it's in a different location or, or however you're doing it, but it, you need to have that extra fill to it. Uh, yeah. That's, Cause it's like, you have it on one side, you know, you have your guests there and there's the aisle and then, you know, somebody walks down the aisle and, and, you know, pizza served whatever they do at the ceremony. I don't know. Um, but you've got the one on one side and it just seems that I, from the, my use of it is that there's just not enough headroom. If you have that person who's talking into the microphone and then the next person holds that microphone down, there's just not enough ability to boost it enough for, for said. And when you go to an EKX, I have, I have done that also with the, uh, use the small, the uh, 12 inch EKX and it worked much better. But then I feel like I'm having to be so loud here and turning it way up when that person drops a microphone down type of thing that the people in front of it, it's like, oh gosh, am I that loud for them? So I can make sure I'm covering the people on the other side. I, I struggle with that when it comes to uh, the ceremony sound. David mentions the uh, Maui 5 Go, um, a great option, but I think the, the, po the, the uh, point of having multiple sources of the sound covering the guests for a ceremony, I go from having to be loud in one spot to uh, maybe maybe more of a background fill from two or four spots, which I think would be, granted it's more gear, but maybe the ultimate, uh, the, the quality of the experience might be much better with multiple sound uh, sources. Yeah, you, you definitely have the ability to kind of run more of a balance with it. Uh, I You know, one of the things I do struggle is the more that you're doing, unless you're running a bunch of like the, the Maui goes or, or the, um, the Bose systems or even like the new JBLs. Uh, now I'm running cords yep. of some sort of power cords. And, and a lot of times it's all I can do to get a single power to where I'm at because when they decide to build their ceremony spot, they decide to make it really beautiful yep. with no freaking power. Not even close. And it's just like, you know, like, I, and I'm not talking like I'm running off a generator. I'm, I'm talking like they've got one outlet and it's a hundred yards behind me I'm being, I'm exaggerating, but it, it oftentimes I find that that's the case. What 
it's been interesting. And I know all the sound guys are going to go, oh my gosh, I can't believe you do this. I run from behind the gas. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and so when I'm, when I'm a little bit louder, I don't foresee it being as much of a difficulty because they're the ones that are in the back. First off, if you're, if you go to a reception or a ceremony, you sit in the back, you don't really like the couple, but <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, like they're in the back. So, so it's not like I'm overpowering. Um, it's not like I'm overpowering the officiant. It's not like I'm overpowering the reader who are coming from the front. This is, this becomes maybe even a, as a result, I'm not as needed to be as loud mm -hmm. because they're speaking from the front. I'm coming from the back. And so it's kind of, you're getting that, um, the fill in, if you will, that you might get potentially from two. Again, I know it's not the same. And I know like all my sound guys are going to just yell at me right now in the chat that it actually has come back, but now the video has gone again. So okay. um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I just, I feel like, you know, if I, I mean, if I can avoid running all the chords, that's why I think when we talked about the NAMSHA, the, the new JBL, you know, that that's coming out and they've right. ready to, to plug into one and have it to send to the others and not have to run a whole bunch of like the Sennheiser sticks or the Alto wireless systems, just so that I have sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got people sharing uh, the Maui Five, of course. Uh, Dave mentioned that. Uh, Jimmy mentions that he hands bullhorns out to all the guests and let them make the sound. Um, they can all hum the hum the the uh, here comes the bride. Uh, Jonathan talks about uh, uh, an Evolve Fifty battery pack and iPad with wireless mic, and off off a person goes. I think there's a lot of a lot of different options. Um, I guess probably the big takeaway, though, for people who are doing ceremony is is yeah, one speaker can do it. Um, I think that the days of having multiple source audio, especially with wireless, whether it's the JBL that uh, Dan was just mentioning or the Bose. I mean, you take that Bose, Dan sitting in the back, he's got his his mixer, he's got his little audio uh, audio source. He's running wireless with two of the Sennheiser, you know, X, uh, the XL uh, S things, little digital things. He's going to his two Bose speakers on the sides. He's completely wireless for the to get the sound there. It, there's virtually no latency. He's got his stuff. He's, he's good to go. I mean, there's and he's got because they're on the side. He's got some decent coverage of all the guests with the microphones and such. So, I think it's um, just a, that idea. Just to keeping in mind that. Sometimes we can only use one speaker. That's just the way it is. But overall, I think for the better guest experience, multiple uh, audio source points would be uh, would be be uh, the best. Well, here's one thing we haven't really talked about. I mean, we were talking about sound quality and sound coverage and that type of thing. And and you know, I, I've mentioned I only run one speaker, so I'm guilty of this. But if we were to have a an equipment failure. If we were to have one of the speakers suddenly decide that it was going to, you know, it's sitting out in the middle of the sun, that it decides it's going to overheat, whatever might happen to be the case of that piece of equipment there while you're at the moment, you don't have your other one running the, you know, hold up, everybody stop the ceremony. <laughs> wait, wait, like, uh, can you go back and walk in again? I need to reset. Kind of that's like the like the reception you can kind of pull some of that i don't want to say you should do it there either you know there's like you don't really want it to happen during the first dance but if it happens you know so, uh, you know 30 minutes into the dance set worst case you know something goes down you you got okay i got something running here in a moment but build in build in backup by having more than one speaker running mm -hmm. i think yeah that's a that's a really good point and obviously once you have those two whether it's the two Maui fives, two JBLs, two bows, whatever it is, you are you are good uh, good to go. So uh, the bullhorn thing, uh, they they didn't like that. They wanted harmonicas and kazoos. Oh, okay. So you know that would really that would up the talent level needed from your guests. So I guess if you're going to do that, you make sure you invite only the talented members of your family and friends. Which for some of us might mean that there's not many people invited. I'm just going to say it out loud, but that was <laughs> what a. <clears throat> anyway, okay, so we covered ceremonies a little bit. Yeah, weddings. We were kind of talking, I think, uh, along the lines of weddings with uh, with our sound systems and such. Let's move over to talking about teen events or young young person events. Can we have too much sound for a teen event? Can we? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, 
you know, there, there's something to be said for, for blowing them out completely. Um, is, is it too much for them? No. I mean, they're, you know, they're going to eat up most of what you have, but I think you also have to have that headroom and you're not blasting with it as soon as they walk through the door. Like, you know, I've done, I've been guilty of that. You know, I'm, I'm playing at the volume. I'm going to play that the whole night. And what do I notice? It's a long time before the spot in front of me gets filled up. Yeah. Like, they stay towards the back of, not back of the room, but maybe the back of the dance floor. Like it takes a while to move up. Whereas if you start a little bit lower and fill and build and build, then one, there's not also not the ear fatigue where they're suddenly like, why is this so quiet? Like you, you've been able to kind of counteract that and use that. Um, there is such a thing as too much. I think very similar to a, like a concert type of setup. It's, it's hard for them to say it's too much but they're going to react like it is. So we can get to a point where we can be too loud. Now, following that, we want to play louder. When it comes to a school, my, my thought when it comes to a school dance is that if I, need, if I need single 18s on each side, if I do double 18s, I'm getting more, more sound volume or getting more sound pressure coming from the, with the bass side of it but I don't have to push the system as hard. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's really a, a thought process or discussion I have when it comes to weddings because of the, the variety of music that we play at a wedding and the variety of guests at a wedding. We just don't do things. We're not hitting them as hard that long when it comes to a wedding. Whereas teen dances, I mean, there's, when Michael's playing, there's times he's doing a 45 minute set where it's just, you know, it's just all bass and, and rumble bump stuff going on. There's, there isn't that slow, okay, we're going to slow it down and there's a slow song and now we're going to go to a couple of 50 songs and then maybe an 80s tune. No, it's that. So I, when it comes to having the right sound system for a teen dance, I think it's one of those things that we have to start then at looking at how can we push hard but not push to the point where we're running your speakers at that 90 percentile too long where you're going to end up causing problems. Well, I think it, it becomes important just to kind of recognize, obviously, like you said, recognizing your needs, recognizing, you know, what's the venue, what's the numbers you're working with, because, you know, the bodies are going to absorb <clears throat> some of that sound. Yeah. So, you know, having that, having that full on, I don't want to say bigger is better, but almost like exactly like you're saying, like, you know, having a set of double 18s, you know, I'd rather have the power and not have to use it than to not have it and you know be running up my system at full board just to kind of make it sound okay yeah i think that's that's a yeah uh, that's a difficult one because we have a lot of djs who are say, hey what i want to get into teen dances and what should i get should i go Here, with evolve 30 amps <laughs> yeah exactly that's it and you'll be good it's going to cover everything you ever wanted to do but they're they're asking the questions and it becomes a Okay, so obviously the, the kind of rule is get the best gear you can afford. And I believe last week when we talked, uh, when we did our, our uh, advice to our younger self, I believe that was what maybe Jimmy or someone else, someone mentioned that, you know, getting the best gear you can afford. Buy once and the whole pain once thing. Uh, uh, Rachel had shared that. Yet when it comes to the teen dances, there's times where we need to have, have a just just more just strictly numbers more speakers more cabinets to be able to do it and it becomes a um, a situation that if we're trying to ask a a single 18 inch sub to be able to do 250 kids it's just not realistic hence we don't have the right rig for the gig yeah and you know i i think one of the things to also kind of consider you know, for yourself is, you know, people are like, Oh, I want to get into teen events. So they immediately say, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy all this. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think there's no, no harm, no foul to say, you know what, I'm going to go out and I'm going to rent this. You know, I'm going to rent, you know, I'm going to have my main system, but now I realize I'm going to need a bigger one because I'm getting this school and I, you know, but I haven't done them. There's only one school maybe that's that large. 
all right, so maybe I go out and I rent the, you know, the extra piece that I need or the extra, right. you know, the double eighteens or even just, you know, an extra couple of whatever mm -hmm. to help with that SBL. So that way it's, you know, it's hitting. All right. Now I've got it for a little bit. Now, you know, now I'm, you know, now I've got that. Now I've got the school consistently. All right. Now make that purchase. Um, you know, too, too often times a lot, you know, we, we get this, we like gear. So we're going to go buy gear. Yeah. And I, I want to do this. I don't have any on the, I don't have any on my, on, on my you know, radar, but once I have the gear, then I'll go do it. No, find a place that you can secure it. Find a place that you're going to be able to rent it, then go after, and then you, you know, rent it until you, until you're in a better position. And I think that's, that's a wise thing. And one of the areas I talk about is, um, is having something, a, a system that you can, that's, that, um, you can add subs to. You know, that you can basically add and subtract and make it, and I can't even think of what I was trying, the word you would use to talk about that, to describe that capability. But so it could be the flexibility is there. So I can run the two tops and one sub. I could run two tops and two, uh, one, a sub on each side. I could run, you know, two subs. I could run two tops and, you know, whatever, where you have that flexibility. And then if you can find someone to rent the other two subs from or rent from a, a, your dealer, your favorite dealer, that local dealer that has those, I think that's a, a huge, a huge uh, benefit because the number of times I take all four subs out is probably three times a year. It just doesn't yeah. happen too much. So, so now I've got, I have you know, $2,000 worth of sub for sitting except for three nights a year. Uh, ta -da, ta -da. it's also storage it was the initial cost it was um, you know and then and then you know every once in a while i like to i like to go and write on them with white paint and then i have to cover that up again because i was you know why are you doing graffiti on your own gear it's just so much hassle so much hassle. modular thank you howie modular i knew there was a word and i couldn't remember what it was okay so it's time for the calculator Yes. To figure out when it comes to what your sound system can do. Now, this this is just a, a, a rule of thumb, and this is not, there's no real truth science behind this, except what we say as science, and then we'll go with that. But the idea is a subwoofer, the cone of a subwoofer, if you take it in a two-dimensional view from the front, is in the shape of a circle correct yes okay there's a formula for figuring out what the area of a circle is pi r round pi r squared oh no they're round that's the pies i eat they're no round. no no the pi pi r squared there's no round in this what are you thinking i'm gonna have to get so Let's take our favorite our favorite little Evolve 50 that has a 12-inch subwoofer. The radius of the 12-inch subwoofer would be half of the diameter, which is 12, so we we're talking 6. You take the, the radius, you square that, which would be 36 times the, the uh, uh, 3.14 of pi, as an example. 36 times that is 119? Sure. Something like that, something, something to that effect. So, 2 Evolve 50 speakers could handle about 120 people hmm. let's go to our favorite 50 so no, wait, you got to do two of them to get that number to, to get that to work yes okay so okay. two evolve 50s um we, t we go, let's bump up to the evolve 100s that don't exist but in our mind they're going to exist because they'll never make them but you know Again, in our minds, and they happen to feature a 15 inch subwoofer. Seven and a half, you do the math and such, that comes up to about 178, I believe, um, uh, square inches of, of surface area, which two 15 inch subs could handle around that 178 guests at a wedding. Pretty close. We jump up to an 18 inch sub, do the math, comes up to about 254 uh, square inches. Two, two 18 inch subs in your sound system can handle about 250 guests. Hmm. You double it for dual 18s, takes you about 500 guests. It's actually not that far off. That's so, a pretty cool equation. So you take that knowledge 
and realize once you jump into once you jump into teen dances, you probably now have to modify that number just a little bit, depending upon size of the room and different things. But you may, when you get into a teen dance, it, you'd almost probably have to uh, take that number and divide it in half. So instead of it being 500, uh, the dual 18s for 500, it's probably dual 18s for about 250 kids in a gymnasium, uh, just because of the, the base needs. Uh, extending that extending that uh, um going the the other direction for uh, with our weddings and such with our evolves we go down to one evolve one evolve would give us to about about 50 guests which isn't far off in that so um so there that that's the subwoofer side now speaker placement specifically when it comes to bill herman's room which you guys when you see the video you'll see that the kind of the rule of thumb as i've been talking to people is that you need to have basically a speaker. If the, if your room is over 75 feet in one direction or the other, you probably are needing to have a secondary sound source in that room on the other side, whether it's a surround sound or in the case of Bill Herman's room, where it's a very long, um, somewhat triangular, rectangular shaped room where he probably needed to have sound on the other side. Using that idea about every 75 feet of distance, there needs to be another set of speakers or another speaker to help cover the area will help you figure out your placement of speakers around the room. So if you have a room that's about 100 feet long and whatever wide, you know, 40 feet wide, you may need speakers on the other end to help fill that area on the other end because you're not going to be able to push enough sound from one end to do that. Where's the best spot to put those speakers? Probably about 75 feet away. And then having them, you know, kind of, especially if they're like an, an array, putting them so that they can kind of fill both directions, set a little time delay on those, and you're good to go. So there's my mathematical formula for figuring out the coverage of your speakers. And as David calls it, it's Young's Law. <laughs> there we are. That's right. So next time when, when we're like, okay, what's that, what subwoofer do we need? We can go and say, just a second. Let's pull out the... And then you have to have... So we would have to have a variable in there of, of age of guess... So that, you know, when the age of guests gets below 20, then that would divide the, the ultimate number in half. So, oh, it's going to be a great formula when it's all done. Well, and, you know, Jimmy brings up, he's like, you know, one evolve does up to 100 guests. And, and I, I don't think if, if you're focusing on those types of things, I think you're missing John's kind of point. Because one of the things that you talked about was the ability to where we're not pushing the speaker to 90%. We're not pushing it you know, to 100%. We're having that headroom yep. to be able to go louder on it and to be able to use it. Can, can you do it for more? Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I would say, you know, I've done my two evolves with 150 guests before. And, you know, because of the room set up and the way it was, it, it was fine. It, 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 was, it worked very well. And, and I don't think I was necessarily pushing them um, I don't think I was necessarily overly pushing them. Um, but I think as a safe rule of thumb, you know, yeah, it probably was a little bit more than what it could have been mm -hmm. had I had another option or had I used another option. So when you're thinking about the right gig or the right rig rather for your gig, you know, if you're into the purchase purchase mode, think about where you are for a majority of your events and think of what those events are because you know, the last thing you want to be doing is buying 10 different systems just so that I can make it fit for here, make it fit for there. If you have the headroom, now you're set because now you can, you can always back it down. When, once you hit the ceiling, you can't go past. That's for sure. And that's, that's probably the biggest, the biggest point of the, the takeaway from tonight's show is that once you hit that, uh, once you, you hit that red, <laughs> you're not, yeah, nothing good happens there. Uh, da -da 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 -da. yeah and and jimmy with a the guests with a senior christmas party obviously your your audience is going to be a huge det uh, determiner with what type of system you need you in need the old folks home instead of cutting in half you double it yeah to to a point uh 
but it really becomes how well those mids and highs will be going out and around and in, in filling a room. And it might even be a case of with the Evolve specifically is that with an older crowd like that, and we might bring that bass down two notches because that bass might bounce around that room. And granted, I don't, I've not worn, had hearing aids yet, thankfully, um, but I don't know how that bass would even affect hearing aids. Would it interfere with them? Would it be to overdrive them? Or is the hearing aids, are they rolling off those types of sounds anyway? So it wouldn't really matter. I don't know, but it'd definitely be something a person would have to be, be thinking about because you want to have it a, a positive uh, and, and enjoyable experience for all guests. And if there's guests over the age of 75, there's going to be hearing aid issues, what have you. And you need to be aware of what's the best way to handle that. So yeah, there we go. That's our rig for the gig show for tonight. Nice. Yeah. So you've alluded to tomorrow night. Then he's talking about making a, uh, yep. a bass drum. Well, he's he's talking about mic mic pickup patterns. Um, the two questions okay. I took to Ben uh, for for uh, for this week's show that he's going to be answering. Um, one was talking about uh, phantom power. For those of you who. Uh, uh, are familiar with phantom power like the board i have right here it's got a little button on it turning into button the phantom power on that's sending a 48 volt signal to my microphone so mics like this will work without phantom power they don't work because they need that little bit of energy to come back to do their thing or it has to be a little device in line to power it. many mics are that way not all some are just regular plug it in doesn't need the the phantom power there's also different I, and I did not know this. I just thought 48 volt was 40, you know, the all phantom power is 48 volts. It turns out that there's not. And the Evolve 30s is what brought this into discussion. So I'm going to ask Ben about that um, to tell, I don't know why. Why does this happen? What does it mean? Will people still buy cupcakes on Sundays? I don't know these answers to any of these questions, and Ben's going to answer those. Then the second is when people are talking about feedback when it comes to microphones. And invariably, when one of the first questions is like, okay, what type of microphone are you using? Well, I got this one from Radio Shack back in the 80s that was $9.99, and it's giving me all sorts of... So we're going to talk about pickup patterns and quality of microphone elements and different things such as that. Um, and of course, one of the areas when you're talking about pickup patterns and elements is frequency, uh, frequencies that they pick up. And of course, not all mics are created equal, which, you know, you wouldn't think that... Yeah, you, you a bass drum kit type mic would be different, but when you start looking at so many vocal mics and the little nuances to so many of them, then it's surprising. So that'll be tomorrow night's show. Um, then let's see. There's a, I think we've got a seven. We have an eight o'clock. Uh, so we were doing an interview with someone tomorrow night. I'm not sure who who I'm doing right off the top. If I'm doing that one or Bill's doing that one. Oh, Brandon Stewart's on tomorrow night. Brandon Stewart's going to be speaking at the uh, DJ and TV DJ convention. Uh, he's going to be talking about supercharging your school dances. Um, so Brandon's been doing a variety of different things, and he decided he wanted to hit the school dance uh, for tomorrow night. That'll be happening at 8 o'clock Eastern. Ben Stowe's at uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, then 10 o'clock Eastern. Um, we're going to talk with uh, uh, Brian, and hopefully we can catch up with Jay and kind of find out uh, what their takes are on, uh, on, on things as we're leaving Nam behind us, and we're looking at... Uh, getting into 220 uh, just a little bit more, so or 2020. So that's kind of on our schedule for tomorrow night. Nice. Of course, you alluded to uh, Brandon Stewart and, and DJ and TV show, but uh, for those who are still like under the rock, or you know, we had like the 70 some people that are tuned in, so maybe they checking it out for the first time. Um, don't forget, you can still get tickets to the show, djntv.com forward slash show. Is where you need to go, and I forgot the promo code though. Uh, it's djntv.com slash tickets, tickets or show. Um, okay, and then the promo code when you do the tickets is djntv show 2020. Uh, the first one I just posted up there, the first link I didn't uh, spell tickets right, so you see it's spelled incorrectly. The second time I did it right, so yeah, and ice cream social, uh, with Ben, I think that's something we should do is go over to uh, go over to to uh, steak and shake. And during the happy hour and everyone could get their, their, you know, we can take a buddy because I think they're half price. So then you can, you know, 
get your get your shakes and then we can have some fun with that but yeah brandon will be on tomorrow night um ticket links are down below they're in the description of the video so you guys can jump out there and grab your tickets because they go up on price let's see today is the 20 what is it 27 27 four days after in five days the ticket prices are going to be jumping up as we get closer to the show so this is the time tomorrow is the day to book airfare that's actually going to be my show tomorrow i'm going to be sitting in the um in, in the, the car, uh, I've got to take the car in to get the oil changed. During that, I'm going to live stream, and I'm going to go from everyone's airport, going to calculate how much it costs to fly from your city to Las Vegas, those dates, and and tell everyone how much. It's like, today's the day. Tuesdays are the, great, the best day to buy your airfare. If you've never purchased airfare, specifically on Tuesday, Tuesdays are generally the cheapest day to buy. And I'm going to go through and do that tomorrow. I can actually buy airfare for everyone. I'm just going to go and say, make them feel guilty that they missed the great prices that are up there tomorrow. Spumoni, goodness. And yes, the uh, rooms are still sixty nine dollars uh, at the at the uh, uh, casino at uh, South Point. We don't know what that's going to change after I believe January thirtieth. I think is the day that they can change. Doesn't mean they will, but the chances are pretty good because we've got. At last heard, I heard total uh, ticket count. We're pushing four thousand right now, which means that our room block is got to be getting close to the end of it. So, once that's all filled up, then they all of a sudden those sixty nine dollar rooms will be ninety nine dollars a night and whatever they go to. So, should be fun. Looking forward to it. So, yeah, absolutely. Good deal. All right. Well, John, anything else you want to add? I think we're good. I think we'll, we'll take it and wrap it up, and then we'll uh, be back tomorrow. Good. Well, thank you very much for everybody who joined us, whether it be YouTube, Facebook, or whether it be uh, tonight on Monday night, or whether it was sometime later in this week. We very much appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to spend it with us. Hopefully you learned a few ideas or maybe some uh, new schools of thought. Maybe you just learned a little math, whatever happened to be the case. Um, hopefully it was very beneficial for you. Have a wonderful evening and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.